Good afternoon. My name is Howard, Motor Doc Penrose, and we're in a hybrid Tahoe. Driving back from Michigan right now, back to our offices in Illinois, I had to make a quick pit stop. The nice thing about this thing is I don't have to stop for gas. Made the trip up, making the trip back, one tank. In any case, one of the things that uh, that's been bothering me a lot lately is truth in advertising, as you can tell from my other blogs. Um, you know, in, in the automotive sector, the, the claim that uh, from one manufacturer that they were the first zero landfill, when that wasn't true. As a matter of fact, General Motors had 14 zero landfill facilities before that first facility was certified as zero landfill in 2007. In any case, they're up to 43 zero landfill right now, GM, and um, and with a commitment to have half of their facilities to zero landfill by the end of 2010. The other hand, in the uh, reliability and maintenance world, the first thing I took to task was the claim by some manufacturers to be arc flash resistant. Now, my issue with that um, was not the viability of any particular manufacturer's window, but that um, I was objecting and am objecting to the type of advertising that, um, that gives information such that people think they don't have to perform a risk analysis, or that they're perfectly safe, or that putting such a window in place uh, would maintain their UL rating for their cabinet or their arc flash rating for their cabinet. We had an interesting back and forth discussion um, related to that topic on the Motor Diagnostic and Motor Health uh, blog, this one right here, and um, um, in the end, uh, one of the authorities uh, stepped in and confirmed what I'd been saying. In any case, um, the issue that I'm coming up with now is one that seems to have been happening lately and has been getting a lot of press. Now, I, I have to say, journalists are getting awful lazy out there. They're not looking into stuff. Now, in this particular case, there's been a number of reports and, and so on about these little power factor correction modules that you can install in your home and save up to 50% of your energy. Guess what? Doesn't work that way. Matter of fact, they even use, uh, they even misrepresent certain terms in order to give you the, the impression that they're reducing your total power. Well, KVA is actually referred to as your apparent power, and most households are actually rated based upon kilowatt hours of usage and kilowatts demand. Power factor correction capacitors, well, if I'm sitting there and I'm measuring current before and after, what happens is uh, I'll see a change in my current. I will not see a change in my demand or my kilowatt hour consumption, which is the real power or the real usage. The reason why is because in any system I have, or any household system or factory system, I'll have uh, components that are inductors, electric motors, transformers, certain ballasts, things like that, things that have coils in them. And those coils, there's a magnetizing energy that's required, and that's referred to as kilovolt amps reactive. That's an imagine, well, it, if you're looking at vectors, it amounts to an imaginary energy. The power factor, oh, and, but uh, that is, if I were to take a look at this, and I'm going to insert a diagram right here. Hello. This is a representation of power factor and what is going on with your utility bills as you are using kilowatts, which most of your utility bills are rated based on kilowatt demand, which is the peak kilowatts used in a particular 15 or half hour or one hour period.